Hey guys, welcome to the Man Up Men's Devotional uh, Minute. Hey, listen, my name is Dwayne Roberts. Um, today's uh, devotional is coming out of John 9, chapter 9, verses 25 through 34. And if I had to give this a title, I would title it, One Thing I Know That Though I Was Blind, Now I See. We pick this story up where Jesus is walking with his disciples and they see a blind man and Jesus and his disciples ask, who sinned? Was it his parents or was it this man that he's blind? And Jesus said, neither. He's this way because um, uh, to, to show forth the glory of God in his life. And Jesus stops, take time. Uh, with this man, stoops in front of him, spits into the sand, turns the sand into mud and wipes the mud on this guy's eyes and tells him, go wipe it off in the pool of Siloam. All right. Now, this is an interesting story. Um, as, as as I read. And so, oh, here we go. This is what happens on his return back from Siloam. Uh, the people recognize him and ask, they're asking themselves the question, isn't that the guy who's been sitting at the gate all this time who, who, who was blind? And he responds, yes, I am he. And the Pharisees overhear this and they look up and they're curious to know, well, how did you get healed? Who healed you? And who healed you on the Sabbath? Right. So here we pick up in verse 26 where he goes and he says, then they said to him again, what did he do to you? And how did he open your eyes? And the man answered, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they, they were reveled him and, 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 and backlashed him and, 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 and argue with him in that moment and said, you are his disciples and we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. And the man answered and said to them, why? This is the marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear of sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. And since the world began, it has not been, I mean, I'm sorry, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not do the thing, do through the thing he did. And they answered him and said, you were completely born into sin. And now you're teaching us. And they cast him out of the synagogue. People, man, listen, I, I, I chuckle every time I read that portion of scripture. And it amazes me how, um, how so many people can be oblivious to the big picture. Interesting enough in this story that the Pharisees were focused on this man's healing in the time or during the Sabbath day. It wasn't interesting enough that he was born blind and now he can see uh, and, and, and here it is. Jesus did this miracle and they're giving God praise. Instead, they're looking for a reason to ridicule Jesus. If you read the story, they went so as far as to go get the, the, this man's parents to vouch for it, that he was born blind. And then the, they, they wanted to hear the story multiple times for, for what, how Jesus healed him. You know, um, ha have you ever been, uh, so annoyed, so annoyed by trying to share a different point of view? Yeah. Have you ever been so annoyed uh, with trying to uh, uh, um, help people uh, understand something that simply doesn't make sense sometimes? I find that people, when we, we, we are challenged with people who simply want to have it their way, have it their way and hear it their way um, can really be frustrating or can spark frustration. Um, it can even get to a place where it might even be, make us become argumentative. And in some cases, 
some of us, and I won't say, <laughs> have been known to just simply cuss folks out. Why? Because you have just annoyed me to no end. The interesting thing here is that this man, uh, composure, his his being, um, is uh, and and the statement he makes. He says, "One thing I know." And that is, though I was blind, now I see. What was he saying, really saying? Before, before let's really understand what it is to be blind. From the scientific appro uh, um, approach, being blind means having less than one-tenth of your normal vision, or you're simply sightless. However, on the other hand, to be able to see is to perceive, to be aware, to imagine, to form a mental picture, to pre even perceive a meaning or importance. And when we come to this scripture, I realized that uh, the Pharisees were blind in this moment and in this time. They could not see uh, uh, the, the, the graciousness uh, the, the, of, of God. They could not see um, the, the magnificent beauty of God. They can only focus on their one dimensional point of view. And that being it was the Sabbath and nobody is to do anything on the Sabbath besides argue, have arguments about what you can and can't do. <laughs> I think there's more, there's more energy being used in the wrong way than, in, than any other way. And so <laughs> when I, when I, when I, when I understand this, um, this scripture and this, this point of view, uh, sometimes in life, um, sometime in life, we got to help people see the bigger picture. We're going to have to help navigate people to a more designed God, uh, uh point of view, you know, um, one thing I, I noticed about this guy in the midst of this conversation was um, he was very decisive in how he handled this situation. He wasn't even easily uh, angered or frustrated with the, their challenges. Matter of fact, he was very interactive in how he approached and dealt with the people. It wasn't he wasn't in his outside of his comfort zone or outside of his environment. I mean, think about it. He went from blind to now seeing and he still was in a place of uh, of of control, you know, and he understood something. He understood uh he understood, he understood the scripture or policy better than the, the, the Pharisees. I mean, here he says he really opened their eyes to perception, to meaning and importance. And they were offended. They were offended by, by his knowledge, his wisdom and understanding for what God had did in his life. You know, sometimes um, we have to get to this place and just simply realize that we understand or the big picture and that that some that times when God is operating, when we are open enough, when we are uh, uh, willing enough or what better yet, let's rephrase that. If we are blind enough to simply uh, trust God in the midst of him spitting into the dirt, making some mud pie with his fingers and then taking them and putting them on our, our face and eyes and then give us a, a um, um, a command or order how to how, how to re remove it move it i mean come on i think this guy had to be at a play, place of of uh, openness he had to be a place at a place of some of submitting you know it's not like he didn't hear god spit on the ground you know or jesus spit on the ground it's not like he you know he he never asked what are you doing why you put that on my face what's you know he, he, he just accepted it. And we got to get to a place where we just trust God enough that we accept. Yeah, we accept what what doesn't make sense. Instead of asking all the, the annoying questions, instead, instead of focusing on all the small reasonings in life, we focus on the big picture that, hey, I can gain my sight. Not only will I gain my sight, but I will gain a level of wholeness that will give me one, a, a, different, perspe spec, uh, a, a different perspective that will give me a, uh, 
um, and caused me to have a different awareness um, to a place and point. Now I can form a more formalized God-given vision or picture for my life. And now too, I understand my life has um, a larger meaning and importance. Man, that's pretty good. So I want to encourage you guys, um, when you're moving forward, get to this place where you simply trust God in your life. Um, don't, don't be uh, blinded by the small, uh, small, um, small factors of life. But let's get hold of the God-given vision. Let's remove the blindness, remove our blind I blind eyes and replace them with eyes that we can begin to see and trust God's direction for our life. Listen, if this word was good, I encourage you in the chat, hit the like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and join me each and every morning for Man Up, that's right, Men's Devotional. I'm your boy, Dwayne Roberts, and as you always hear me say, success is in your hands, but it's up to you what you do with it. God bless. Thank you.